So benefits of functional programming. You, you'll see, when we get done with this class, you'll see how often functional programming is really already included in the languages you already know. In many cases, it's meant to be syntactic sugar, which is another term I go over later, meaning I can, the rookie will make, you know, 600 lines where I can do it in two just because I know some of the features that the language might have. So it's a, maybe a little bit of a show-off piece, but again, you're the one doing all the work, and frankly, we're lazy, aren't we? So if we know something that's going to do a, the work for us in a lot shorter detail, that's what we're going to be happy with. The other part is, is when we do some type of unit testing, remember with unit testing, we're making very small items. We're not trying to put variables and stuff like that. Our mentality has to be bring in a variable, check it out, give us a response. That's it. That's really what a lot of debugging and unit testing is like, and you're going to get used to that type of mentality with all the programming that we're doing in this class. Now, <clears throat> there are some concurrency things that functional programming language has that we really don't go over really much in this course, but still nice because, again, we talked about the delay feature. That's a nice feature. I bet some of your other languages might have that. Just the concepts of a lot of things that we have in functional programming really show up in the normal programming of C++, Java, or whatever you have. Just as long as you understand the details that we'll go over even more later on this class, that's a big step up that you can, well, talk about with your future employer. Don't forget my kickback. Here's, an, again, the last part actually is allows you machine-assisted proofs and optimization. If you want to go down that route, they'll talk about functional programming in those courses. So this may not be the only time that you see this.